Chapter Six: Beautiful Flat Plains versus Water Mountain Pillows. Of one thing, I am sure. Reading the heading for this chapter had you coming up with a visual in your head. I wonder if it was accurate to what I'll be discussing, or so far off you'll be laughing. Well, if you think I'm referring to literal flat plains or literal mountains or even literal water, I'm sorry to disappoint you. This chapter would have been called "Oi Vey, I'm Gay" if one I was Jewish, which I'm not, or two I didn't fear the nanny TV show company coming after me for copyright. In saying that, the heading does accurately depict the beginnings of my being gay, or at least the beginnings of my learning that I was gay. Shout out to Sonia and Nicole. Turns out you both were right after all. It may surprise you to know that while I was attracted to Ryan, not only did Ryan and I never actually do anything gay together, and I mean anything. We didn't even go to a gay club or bar. My first actual gay experience, if you can call it that. Actually happened way before I met Ryan. I don't want to go into detail about it. Suffice it to say, I had a friend who was a guy, and we fooled around before we even knew what gay meant. Then I started dating a girl. I'll leave her name out to protect her identity, but this started the whole beautiful flat plains versus water mountain pillows that inspired the title of this chapter. Clear the children out of the room. It's time to use the word sex. So this girl and I did the dirty, dirty, <laughs> and seriously, it was the most uncomfortable thing I've ever done. Why? The water mountain pillows. Yes, water mountain pillows is the word I'm using for breasts. I was freaked out by them. Not freaked out that they were there, but more freaked out as to what was going to happen to them if I leaned too much on her while we're doing it. I kept thinking, "Oh my God, will they pop?" Hey, I was a kid. I didn't know. But also, they made me uncomfortable. Like, can I actually lay on them? No, I guess I need to arc my back and watch out for them. It was a whole mess. Compared to my first gay sexual experience, where trust me, I let out a giant breath and thought, "It's a flat plane, yay!" <laughs> the relationship with the girl was so complicated. Everything was an issue, and I mean, everything was an issue. In the end, we mutually broke up. Years later, we passed each other on the street and had a hilarious moment when we came out to each other. The good news was we were each other's first and last straight relationship. <laughs> to you, my one girlfriend, I hope you're well and much love. Once that finally ended, I found myself drifting back to my feelings for Ryan. They grew over time. Not only was he extremely cute, but he was a great guy, and I felt would make an even better boyfriend. I finally, finally asked him out in year ten. My goodness, was that a story! We began in one classroom writing notes to each other. By now, we were writing notes instead of drawing. I don't remember who, but one of us posed the question about liking guys, and we both admitted we did. I don't recall if we actually used the word "gay" or if we said "bye," but we did confirm we liked guys. And then finally, finally, after nearly four years, we got to do the gay chat thing, as in. Which guy do you think is hot at the school? Which male celebrities do you have a crush on, etc. There's a scene in the film The Swan Princess where Prince Derek's mother, disappointed that Prince Derek and Princess Odette won't be getting together after all, and a potential merger of two kingdoms wouldn't occur, cried, "All those years of planning wasted." That was my emotion. Finally, I had someone to chat guy stuff with, and we were, I believe, a month or two away from being done with year ten. If I remember correctly, Ryan was considering dropping out after year ten, which is why, as I alluded to earlier, I thought he had dropped out at the beginning of year eleven. 
Therefore, after nearly four years, we would finally have two months, but only two months, to chat about how much we loved guys. Something I'd never experienced, but always wanted to. In any case, this led to me asking Ryan out that day. Now, in retrospect, I probably should have waited. I mean, as an adult, I see now that it went from, I like guys, I do too, I like you, want to go out? All in the space of a few hours. Ryan turned me down, but he did so respectfully, and I appreciate that. In the next chapter, I'll discuss production, but it's important to mention my main, or really, I think, only crush I had in production. Seth Rintel. Oh my goodness, there is way too much to say and therefore would be too much to read, so I'll keep it short and sweet. I did five productions while at EKC. In my second and third, a new student who had come to the school was also in production with me. His name was Seth. Seth was a thespian through and through. Anyone who met him loved him. Maybe not as much as me, but as much as you can love someone, even if only platonically. He was very cute, very talented, and such a nice guy, it was hard not to fall for him. The reason I bring him up here is twofold. One, because it turned out Ryan also had a crush on him. And two, because it formed part of my gay experience. No, don't get excited, my gay experience with Seth amounted to the same thing I had with Ryan, in that I asked him out. Well, no, I... Okay, you need more. My crush on Seth began from the moment I met him. He was to... He was cast to play Seymour, the main male lead in Little Shop of Horrors. My second production, his first. Seth was in in year 11, I was in year 9. I admired his work ethic ethic and acting, and weird as this may sound, his curtain call bow. Yes, true story, Seth didn't do a standard bow at curtain call. And if you knew him, you'd get why. He can't do the standard stiff-bodied jerk, no, they are not puns, (laughs) bow that straight actors do. No, Seth was over the top. He started with his right hand on his left shoulder, moved it up in an arc over his face, out to the right, and kind of curled it in like a ballerina and at the same time, lifted his left foot and brought it back a bit before sort of doing a curved sort of bow. It was elegant and graceful. But what I admired about it uh, was that it was different. I'll talk acting ambitions in the next next chapter, but I, as an actor, wanted to stand out and be an individual. While technically I'd be copying his bow, no one else was doing it. Eventually, after Seth left the school, I asked him if I could take his bow, and he was happy to give it to me. Thanks, Seth. Long story short, the crush developed more and more and probably at least half the girls in production knew. I even had a couple of girls try to scope out the situation to see if he'd be interested. Thank you, Alicia and Amanda. (laughs) I spent restless nights during our week's performances for his final production, agonising over how and when to ask him. But there was a problem. Ryan and I were still writing notes and talking about Seth, and Ryan admitted he liked him too. Every year, production's cast held an after-party somewhere. In my first year, the director organised it, and we went to a restaurant. Every other year, the kids arranged it, and alcohol was involved. I didn't go because I wasn't allowed to. Too young to be around alcohol and all that stuff. Ryan told me a few days before the last night of production for that year, Seth's final year, that he was going to ask Seth out at the after-party. I knew if I was to have any chance, I'd need to beat Ryan to the punch, especially given I wouldn't be there at the party. Ultimately, I didn't say anything till the last night, and even needed Alicia to shepherd him to me. Thank you again, Alicia. We were in the wings on the last night. No one else was there, and I... froze. I couldn't talk. Finally, I blurted out while looking at my feet, I add, I just want you to know I like you. 
Seth's response, thank you. And then he walked away. Oh, you should have seen me that night. <laughs> I was an over-analyst psychologist's dream project. I should have said, what do you think? I should have said, so will you go out with me? To thank you? Thank you? Who says thank you in that situation? Of course, I was also thinking, now he's going to be Ryan's boyfriend. By now, Sonia and I had actually become friends. Sonia had a friend called Crystal. Crystal was in production with me and was a year ahead of me. She did go to the after parties. The day after the after party, I met up with Crystal, broke down and told her everything. That I was gay, she wasn't surprised. That I loved Seth, she was surprised. What I told him, what I said, and what I knew Ryan would do. Crystal was more amazing than I could have hoped. She raced through answers for me. I figured you were gay, that's fine. I didn't know you liked Seth. I'm sorry he said that. And Ryan went to the party. He got totally smashed and made a fool of himself. Everyone thought he was an idiot. As to him and Seth, I didn't even see them together, and I was there all night keeping an eye on Ryan. I sighed in relief, thanked and hugged Crystal, and mentally, finally allowed myself to move on from the idea of Ryan shoving himself and Seth in my face. Ultimately, though I don't remember how, we, Seth and I, swapped numbers and spoke on three separate occasions, one of those times being the time I asked if I could use his bow. He came out to me in another, and in another we just talked casually, but that was it. Haven't heard from him since. Seth, my friend, I hope you're happy, wherever you are. I mentioned earlier how Ryan and I formed friendships at the Essendon campus of EKC. One new friend I made, we'll call her Scary. Scary isn't her legal name, but she donned it as a nickname, so we'll use it here. The first day I met Scary, she was part of a group that I'd gotten to know, featuring people I knew from different classes. There were seven of us, including me, and it was the largest friendship circle I'd ever had. I single out Scary here because the rest of my high school gay experiences were thanks to her. Scary eventually got me to Minus, which is an underage gay bar, where I met my first boyfriend, Douglas. Sure, I could call him Doug, but his name is Douglas, and he was a Douglas. While at Minus, I was on the dance floor with Scary and another friend of hers, and while they danced, I tried to dance. Let's get this straight. I love to dance. Two choreographed dances. Freestyle? I'm a mess. They didn't hand out freestyle classes in my day, but they should have. Meanwhile, this guy, like a wallflower, was sitting against the wall. I had two choices. One, stay and try to keep quote-unquote dancing, or two, go over and say hi. So I did the latter. We moved off to a quieter area, and I got to know him a little better. Oh my goodness, this guy was a dream. Cute, classy, loved cooking, loved reading and writing. In my teenage mind, we were M-F-E-O, made for each other. Douglas asked me out in the most classy, adorable way. He got down on one knee as though proposing marriage and yet proposing to go out, and I gracefully accepted. Seriously, sidebar, he did take... Like, I don't know if he did or not, but the question remains, did he take lessons in deportment, elegance, and grace, and it just wasn't offered at my school? The relationship didn't last long, but I enjoyed our time together. I also dated Ben. That was a story and a half. You could write a series about that. Ben and I went to high school together, and I believed we dated because we were the only gears in the village. I mean, we weren't, but it felt that way. Dating because we should. 
Delta Goodrum, an Australian singer-songwriter, has a song called Predictable. Look it up. The first line is, You're just so predictable in every way I... In my version, it's, Ben, you're just so predictable in every way I... (laughs) Ben and I dated, broke up, dated, broke up so many times, in the end, it finally had to be over for good, and finally, it was. There are others, but those are for another time. One thing I truly loved about the Essendon campus at EKC was getting to be my gay self without hiding it. I was gay, and as the word itself is defined, I was happy.